Hello, this is Ryan with HiBite, and I'm bringing you our second video in our HiBite Intelligence Hub Connections Overview series. This series will focus on one connector at a time, show you how to set up the connection, how to build an input, how to build an output, and explain all optional settings along the way. In today's video, we'll be talking about our file connector. The file connector enables users to easily transport images, videos, or other data files up to 32 megabytes in size from one location to the other. Some possible use cases for this connection, you can easily transport maybe quality images or videos or other files associated with the production um, build to the cloud or other locations for historical reference. Or perhaps you want to use HiBite Intelligence Hub's flow automation to automatically distribute maybe CAD or CNC tool path files or any other templated files that might be managed from a centrally uh, enterprise managed location. Um, again, distribute those automatically out to your individual uh, work locations. Or maybe you have a CSV or Parquet file from a separate HiBite Intelligence Hub use case that you want to stream to Maybe it's a Azure blob storage or AWS S3 bucket for further analysis or maybe even machine learning. All these use cases are possible with the Highlight Intelligence Hub file connector. Now let's talk about what you will need to establish this connection. First, you'll need access to the file directory from the Highlight server. This will be the directory you'll use for either inputs or outputs depending on your use case. Secondly, you'll need to determine if the files should be indexed or not. Really what this means is when you enable indexing, the process files are moved out of the specified file directory into a separate processed file directory. Next, you need to ensure that the files are under 32 megabytes in size. And finally, you may need to work with your internal security administrators to account for any sort of antivirus settings, um, some possible um, adjustments to your antivirus policy would be um, reviewing the real-time scanning and ensuring that um, the highlight process can complete without the antivirus picking that process up as malicious. All right, now that we've covered the introductory topics, let's hop into our first demo. Um, as you can see, I have a handful of connections already pre-configured for this overview video, but let's start by creating a new file connection. So I'll call this file local to keep myself organized. Under protocol, I'm going to be selecting file. And so for this example, I'm going to be using all a local directory under this C demo um, folder path. And so for my first directory, I'm going to be using files. So this is going to be where we're going to um, either pull data files through the inputs or write data files out um, to the outputs. So if you have multiple directories um, for, for multiple use cases, you'll likely need to create um, separate uh, file connections with, uh, with those specified locations. Uh, so for this example, we're going to just keep everything local to this C demo folder. The next um, directory is our process directory. So if you enable processing on, a, on an input, um, basically how that would work is as the flow executes, it will read from this directory, remove that file as it's been processed to the process directory. And then obviously if there's any errors, we're going to need to specify a directory to, uh, to capture those. So um, I want to keep that all under error and we'll leave storm forward disabled for now and hit submit. All right, we have our connector all built out. Let's now create an input. So I'm going to hop over to inputs and select create inputs and um, just accept the defaults for now and just kind of talk you through um, all these various settings here. So the first and foremost, uh, the file name, this is going to be the um, regex based expression or even direct file name if, uh, if the use case calls for it of uh, the file you're trying to build the input around. So looking at my directory here, um, I have a couple files, asset info tanks, service info motors, and then a subfolder, which we'll get to in a second. If, if I accept this as is, I can do a quick read, and it's what it's going to do is look at any uh, file in that directory and go in alphabetical order as soon as it hits the, um, the proper criteria. Um, and so you can see here, it's, it's, finding a, um, it's finding a file, and now it's treating that file as a binary base64 encoded string. 
Um, we'll, we'll see that in a second when we output it and embed this file into an MQTT broker, but just to um, show you how this, uh, this connector works, um, what I'll do is I will flag on this include metadata and let's get a little bit more specific. Maybe we want to, um, we want to first, I guess, see what this reads as. So this is uh, asset info tanks, which is probably the uh, first in alphabetical order as far as file names. Um, but let's say I wanted to pull in this service info or maybe any sort of file that starts with service info. I could easily do that by um, structuring my file name again in the regex based expression. So there's a lot of power behind how you can, um, you can tailor this to meet your needs. But for this example, I'm keeping it very basic. So I'll do a save under service info and do another read and you can see now I'm, I'm picking up the right file. So in this use case, this is how I would structure it if I have uh, files that are gonna be periodically dropped into this directory through some sort of business process and I wanna let HiByte um, automate the, the movement of these files. And I can even go as far as um, specifying a, a subdirectory. Um, so if I go to, um, let's just double check my naming here, subfolder. So if I go and specify subfolder in this relative path, it's going to tell the connection to look in this, um, this subfolder. So we can do a quick read. We can see that now the file name is asset info tanks underscore subfolder, which should match to what we have here. I'm going to come back to the, uh, the indexed file setting here in just a second, um, but I want to get through this kind of first initial walkthrough before we um, go through a, an indexed process. So in this case, let's just pretend I want to embed this, uh, this CSV file into my unified namespace for some other user to, uh, to, to consume. So I'll just go and create a basic flow here, and we'll just call this test file to MQDT. Click next. And so in this case, I want to just go to my direct, uh, my direct file. And again, so this is, a, this is now a complex object. So I need to go right to the, the value and not so much the, um, the, the file name string or the root object. If I just want to embed the, um, the, the binary string of the, of the asset, maybe I do want to include the metadata and then have users subscribe to it on the, on the other side of the value. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to go right to the right to the file um, and omit the metadata. And so for output, let's just go to um, MQTT um, and it doesn't look like we have one, so we can create one really quick. So I'm just going to go and send this to highbyte UNS. We'll go highbyte and just files for simplicity. And so now we should be able to go to our flow, create flow, file test and again find that value object and then select our target and we'll just do um, maybe this file isn't going to change a lot so I'm going to just say once a day so now that that flow is executing we should now see something in our topic space with that um, that string so now um, you can see that binary 64 um, encoded string um, in the in a unified namespace for users to then subscribe to and you know use as needed. Let's now take this a step further um, and show you the indexing feature. So again, going back to our file directory here, we have three main directories. Really, the only thing that's required is the files, but we have um, optional fields of process file directory and error directory. So the way the indexing works is as a flow executes, which you'll see here in a second. Um, the, the input file from your files directory will be removed and then relocated to the processed files directory. So let's see this in action. So I'm just going to go to my, um, back to my, my test input string here and flag on the index file. So let's just do a quick save here and uh, in my flow, I, I turn this flow off in, um, in between takes here, but you can see I'm back in my demos file subfolder with the, the asset info tanks subfolder CSV. Uh, file still in place. So let's go to our um, file test flow, enable it, and let's just do a quick save here. So let's just double check. Now we're seeing um, we're seeing that in our unified namespace. So if everything went properly. We should see. Yep, this file was removed from our subfolder. If we go back to directories, we'll now see it in our processed subfolder um, directory. 
All right, one last topic as far as file inputs go. Um, use case here that I want to show you is how you can read files from a, uh, a broker or some other system in between perhaps different locations or perhaps different parts of the business at one location. Um, so use case here is we're going to be taking a CSV file. Um, so you can see here my, my input from one environment where I have this include metadata uh, enabled. So what that does is it's going to treat our um, our object or our file input as a complex object with some metadata. Because I want to show you how to account for that on um, further downstream here. So let's uh, let's show you just what's happening here. So that file is being written out to our MQTT topic space, uh, which you can see here. High byte file is just a basic topic, um, and in this um, in this payload, you can see the value of that the string for the actual file, and then the metadata file name as far as the original file name from the input. So I'm going to hop over to my other environment here and, uh, and let's show you um, how we're going to pull that in um, through MQTT inputs. So pretty much um, same here as what you just saw in the MQTT Explorer where you can do a read on that topic, see the value, see the file name. That's all great, um, but let's talk about the output. Um, so I'm going to write this out to a remote location that I have accessible from my Highbyte uh, server. So in this case, I'm bringing it out to uh, a VM called Clavette Apps to a file share called Files. And so my input um, called read, or excuse me, my output um, is, is going to account for that complex data payload. So I'm, I'm going to output it to the file name of output from mpdt.csv. Um, and what I need to do here is I need to do two things. I need to one, enable the base64 decoding to be able to take that string and, and uh, decode it into the actual file structure. Uh, and secondly, I need to specify, since we're working with a complex object here, I need to say this dot value. This is where my string information lives because again, we have that file name metadata from, uh, from the original input. And, uh, and really what I'm concerned here with is the dot value because that's where the, the file string lives. Um, so let's go to our flow. Um, and again, this is just those two inputs and outputs that we just, um, we just reviewed. And I'm just going to fire this up. Let's just make sure there's nothing in our file share. Save it. And we should see that file um, being written. So everything looks like is accessible, it's readable without any issues. So quick overview on how to easily share uh, files from one location to the other as um, using a broker such as MQDT or this could even be a SQL table as that in-between uh, source system. All right, our final topic for this video is going to cover how to build a file output. So for this demonstration, um, I'm going to be writing out um, some a templated instance of values. Um, so in this case, I'm going to be using my motor data set where I have um, three motors in my templatized instance um, with some data points coming in from OPC way. So what we'll be doing is we'll, we'll be writing that out to two locations. Uh, the first, we're going to be writing it out to a remote, our remote file location of Clavette apps. Um, and let's just show you what that looks like. Um, so we're going to be writing it with the file name of this.motorid, so dynamically referencing, um, especially where we're, we're using a templatized instance where there's multiple IDs, we want to keep that structure, that standardization of the output structure to be the same. So by putting this.motorid in our file name, we're dynamically referencing uh, those varying identifiers uh, to dynamically build out that, uh, that file name. Um, and as you can see here, our file directory is blank. Um, we'll go and now show you the other um, landing location, which is an Amazon S3 bucket. Um, we'll have a separate video on how to build this connector, um, but I'll show you for the sake of demonstration, the output. So same thing here, we're going to be writing to our, um, to our sales demonstration bucket with the um, key of this dot motor ID again that same dynamic referencing to, to keep that same structure for those like objects and uh, and so finally um, let's go to our flow execution um, I have the flow already configured so here it's just our instance again templatized instance with uh, with three different objects so motor one motor two motor three and then our two target destinations so that remote 
um, remote file location, and then our S3 bucket. Um, and just to show you that we have no objects in S3 currently. And let's enable this. I'm going to do this every minute. And so we'll start by just going to our remote location. We can see those JSON files being populated. Let's just open one up really quick. And there you go. There's our, our values coming in from our instance. And then we'll hop over to our other browser, do a refresh here. And so we have this being organized um, in a way based on the, the date. Uh, and there you go. You can see our, our same JSON objects for motor one, motor two, motor three um, being landed in our S3 bucket. All right, in conclusion, we just covered how to build our file connector, how to build various inputs, how to consume data, perhaps from a, a embedded file um, binary string, as you saw in the example of MQTT broker being um, in between perhaps two locations for uh, files to easily be shared from one location to the other or one work cell to the other, um, or however you would like to use that functionality. And we covered how to output files um, from instance objects, but that can easily just be from uh, one file directory to another. Um, so hopefully you found this useful. As always, we love to hear your, your wins and your success stories. So if you do have a, a really exciting use case that you'd like to share, feel free to share that in the comments below. And as always, if you want to learn more, if you like what you saw, feel free to reach out to us as, uh, as outlined on the screen here. Thank you very much. Have a great day.